more manufacturers choose Cerakote than any other finish. Cerakote ceramic coatings are designed for professionals and should be applied with the proper training and equipment by a Cerakote certified applicator. It is critical to follow all of these instructions. If you have any questions, please contact a Cerakote representative. Which Cerakote series is the best choice for your application? Choosing the right Cerakote series is an important first step in the coating process. The Cerakote H series is a line of ceramic polymer hybrid coatings that are designed to provide unmatched performance with an attractive and desirable finish. Cerakote H series coatings provide exceptional corrosion protection, hardness, adhesion, flexibility, impact, chemical and wear resistance. Recommended applications include, but are not limited to, firearms, knives, tools, eyewear, consumer electronics, wearables, sporting and athletic equipment, fresh and salt water applications, and any other application requiring a tough and durable performance coating. The Cerakote Elite Series is the world-class leader in thin film ceramic coatings. We've taken the industry-leading performance of the Cerakote H Series to the next level and improved hardness, abrasion resistance, and lubricity, all in a thinner application. We've accomplished this by developing an advanced resin technology that enables the incorporation of the highest performance of engineered ceramics. The Cerakote Elite Series is available in six modern earth tone colors that can be mixed or patterned to create custom yet high performance finishes. Phase 1. Disassembly. Completely disassemble and detail strip your project. If it's a firearm and you are unfamiliar with this level of disassembly, have a certified gunsmith perform the disassembly and reassembly. For firearm applications, do not coat springs, sears, firing pins, bolt faces, gas rings, or feed ramps. Remember to plug the bore to prevent overspray inside the bore. Take a photograph of all the parts of the firearm. Make note of the substrate type of each piece. For example, steel, aluminum, plastic, composite, or polymer. Phase 2. Degrease. Soak each metal part for 20 to 30 minutes in a degreaser, such as Brake Clean, Simple Green, or Acetone. Just spraying or wiping your parts with an aerosol degreaser is not sufficient. Soaking is required. Place the screws, pins, and other small parts in a smaller container so they are not lost during the soaking process. Using a small tank with a wire basket makes degreasing quick and easy. It is not necessary or recommended to soak plastic and polymer parts in a solvent-based degreaser as to avoid damaging the part. Thoroughly wiping plastic and polymer parts with a compatible degreaser, such as wax and grease remover, is sufficient. Allow the parts to air dry after soaking. Once the parts have been degreased, it is critical that you avoid touching them with your bare hands. Wear powder-free latex or nitrite gloves when handling the parts. Phase 3. Sandblasting. Begin by plugging or masking any surface you don't want sandblasted. For firearms, begin by plugging the bore at both the chamber and the muzzle end of the barrel prior to blasting. Sandblast metallic components with number 100 grit aluminum oxide or garnet sand at 80 to 100 PSI. Lightly blast 30 to 40 PSI non-metal parts such as wood, fiberglass, plastic, or polymer. For anodized parts, set the blasting pressure to 30 to 40 PSI. Strive for an even blast pattern over the surface of the part. These parts require blasting. However, it is not necessary to completely remove the anodized finish. Anodized parts that have been sufficiently blasted should have a dull, matte appearance. Surface Preparation Tips If the surface of the part is still shiny after blasting, you haven't blasted enough. Do not use too coarse of a grit. The microscopic valleys on the surface will be too deep for the coating to completely fill while also leaving the corresponding peaks insufficiently covered. Do not use any type of round blasting media such as glass beads or steel shot. Round media will dimple the surface rather than etching it and will not yield a sufficient blast profile for optimum coating adhesion. Do not hand sand parts as this will not yield a sufficient profile for optimal coating adhesion. 
Do not use dirty or worn out blasting media. Doing so will contaminate your parts. Phase four, racking and masking. Hang or otherwise fixture the parts so that you can access all of the surfaces of each part with your HVLP spray gun. A variety of metal hooks in multiple sizes are ideal for racking larger parts, while thin wire or alligator clips are ideal for fixturing screws, pins, and other small parts. Phase five, gas out. After the parts are racked, heat the metal parts in an oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. Plastic, polymer, wood, and composites should be gassed out at 150 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. If you are unsure as to the temperature stability of your parts, contact the manufacturer prior to gassing out and curing non-metallic parts. Gassing out will evaporate any remaining moisture and solvents and bring any remaining oils to the surface. Remove the parts from the oven and allow them to cool. If no visible oil has been brought to the surface, proceed to phase six. If you see any oil residue or other indications that oil was brought to the surface of the part, reclean the part by soaking it in the degrease tank and gassing out for an additional 30 minutes. This step will need to be repeated until no oil residue is visible after gas out. Now that the part is oil free, reblast the part and continue on to phase six. Any contamination from this point onward may result in coating failure. Phase six, coating preparation. Determine how much Cerakote you intend to use before mixing. Begin by vigorously shaking the bottle until the coating is completely mixed then shake some more for good measure. This should take five to 10 minutes. We strongly recommend a paint shaker for quarts and gallons. Usage and mixing ratio charts are available in the Cerakote training manual at Cerakote.com. An 18 to one coating to catalyst by volume mix ratio is recommended for most H series, but take note, Cerakote Elite series requires an 18 to one coating to catalyst by volume mix ratio. However, for H-Series, other ratios may be used to achieve lower or higher gloss levels. The usage and ratio charts in the training manual will help you determine the correct amounts for your desired finish. Some H-Series coatings require a specific catalyst and mix ratio. Please refer to the product-specific technical data sheets at Cerakote.com prior to coating preparation. Again, it is important to note that the Cerakote Elite Series requires an 18 to 1 coating to catalyst by volume mix ratio. Do not deviate from this. Pour the desired quantity of Cerakote into a glass graduated cylinder or other glass measuring container. Do not mix Cerakote and catalyst in plastic containers as this will compromise the integrity of the coating. Add the catalyst and thoroughly mix for a minimum of 60 seconds. For H-Series, pour the mixed coating through a 100 mesh strainer. For Cerakote Elite Series, it is required to use a 325 mesh filter for proper straining. This is done to ensure that no contaminants will be sprayed onto the finished product. 
If the proportions of Cerakote to Catalyst are incorrect or the combination is not thoroughly mixed, the quality and performance of the coating will be adversely affected. Pot life for mixed Cerakote is approximately two hours in an open or closed container, so mix only what you intend to use and avoid waste. Please consider these tips. If the coating sits for more than 15 minutes in the HVLP spray gun, it will begin to settle and re-agitation is required. Clean all containers and equipment with acetone. A squeeze bottle and bottle brush are helpful tools for cleaning. Final checklist before spraying. Check plugs and masking. Ensure all parts are racked securely. Wear a respirator, protective gloves, and safety glasses. Spray in a well-ventilated, well-lit spray booth. SDSs and additional safety and handling information are available at Cerakote.com. Phase 7. Spraying. Pour the mixed Cerakote into an HVLP gun with a metal cup and .8 mm tip. Avoid using spray guns with plastic cups as this will compromise the integrity of the coating. Set the air pressure at 20 to 25 PSI for H series and 25 to 30 for Elite series. Practice. Start spraying on a piece of paper to adjust the spray pattern and to practice your spraying technique. Spray with the gun 3 to 5 inches away from the paper and adjust the spray pattern to between 2 and 3 inches wide. Visit Cerakote.com for spray gun adjustment information. The most common application mistake is dry spray. Dry spray has a rough sandpaper-like appearance and is typically caused by spraying too far away from the part, too wide of a spray pattern, not enough material coming out of the gun, or too much air pressure. If you experience dry spray, ensure you are no further than 3 to 5 inches away from the part. Reduce your spray pattern to between 2 and 3 inches wide. Check that your air pressure is no higher than 20 to 25 PSI. And finally, adjust your fluid control to ensure you have adequate coating material being applied to wet out the part in one pass. Blow off parts with dry compressed air to make sure that there is no trapped blasting media in any holes or pockets. Sand left behind will cause surface defects. Start spraying in the most difficult area of each part and finish in the easier areas. This should help avoid runs and thin spots. When spraying, strive for even coverage you are seeking a half thousandth to one thousandth inch coating thickness. Spray with sufficient volume so that the Cerakote does not dry spray, which is when the coating dries in the air before reaching the part. When spraying, the part should appear wet, but not so wet that it wants to run. Cerakote will still be wet to the touch until it is oven cured. If you touch any coated parts before curing, the coating will be smudged and will need to be refinished. To achieve the recommended film thickness, one to two wet coats are recommended. If you make a mistake during spraying, such as a run, do not attempt to wipe down the part and respray. Rather, remove the wet coating with brake clean or acetone and repeat steps two through six. Note, dispose of any unused catalyzed Cerakote according to local and state regulations. Do not return any unused catalyzed Cerakote to the bottle. Pouring catalyzed Cerakote back into the original bottle will render the remaining coating useless. Phase eight, curing. Carefully move all parts into the oven. For Cerakote Elite Series, all parts must be cured at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. For H Series, cure metal parts at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. Cure all heat sensitive parts, such as plastic, polymer, wood, and composite at 150 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. Please refer to the individual product technical data sheets available at Cerakote.com for product-specific cure temperatures. When applying Cerakote over Cerakote, such as when applying stencils, flash cure at 150 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 to 15 minutes. Allow parts to cool to room temperature before applying additional colors. When flashing parts for camouflage or stencils, all parts must be fully cured within 24 hours from the initial flash. After curing is completed, remove the parts from the oven and allow them to cool. Once the parts are cool enough to handle, they can be reassembled. Caution! If you are unsure about the temperature stability of your parts, contact the manufacturer prior to oven curing. For questions, comments, or to inquire about becoming a certified applicator, please contact us at 866-774-7628 or visit us at Cerakote.com. Cerakote. Finish strong.